There you go. All right. So um, there are some people that are not able to make the entire series, so we're going to put them out on YouTube. Awesome. And um, and now with this new technology um, and having a, a Zoom, uh, Zooming it, we'll be able to take full advantage of what um, the technology will offer. And you, if you're looking at YouTube, you'll get the full experience of looking at each person as they um, and, and Paul, yes, the picture yeah. of the top almost looks like the Last Supper. It, it is the panorama. It's a 360 of the room. <laughs> it is. It's the Last Supper. Yeah, the Last Supper. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Yes. So we're going to go ahead and get started today. Um, we started the study last week. Um, uh, uh, we call this study upon this rock because why? Peter's rock. Peter, Peter was named a rock yeah. by Jesus. And we talked last week about his calling, right? And when we talked about Peter's calling, what did we do? Did we just look at one piece of scripture <laughs> or did we look at or did we look at, uh, at all the um, all the Gospels. All of them. All of them. We looked at all of them because they all gave us clues to the calling of the first apostles, right? You when we just got we all got a little bit more background. You know, and one one of the gospel writers just said that uh he, he goes he goes out and he looks at uh, Peter and James and John, sons of Zebedee, sitting in a boat. And he says, come on, I'll make you fishers of men. And they all go, right? And uh, say, that's strange. If John McCullough told me to make me fisher of men and I was out in a boat in front of his house, I ain't going to John. <laughs> I can promise you that. So we gathered that he was, remember, remember the sequence. He's baptized by John the Baptist. He goes into the water. We have our first revelation of the Trinity, right? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Remember that scene? It's a beautiful, biblical scene where um, he's coming up out of the water and the uh, dove and uh, form of the Holy Spirit lands on his shoulder and God from heaven is saying, this is my son and whom I am well pleased. Right? And so we get this picture the first time the revelation of the Trinity. Immediately thereafter was Jesus too. He goes into the wilderness where he spends 40 days being purified for his ministry. Then he comes back and he's going through around um, Tiberius Lake or uh, Genesaret or whatever you like you want to call it. Uh, it's all the same name. Uh, the lake had several different names. And what does he do? He starts announcing to the people that the day of the Lord has come. And so he's he is walking through Capernaum and the outskirts of Capernaum. And he is revealing himself, revealing his ministry, and he's talking. And so when you see James and Peter and John and the other calling, those guys saw him. They heard him. Um, Andrew was following it, was a, was a follower of John the Baptist. <laughs> He's a follower of John the Baptist, but all of a sudden, he said, uh, John the Baptist says, there's the Lamb of God. And guess what Andrew does? He goes, follows Jesus, and he goes home and tells his brother, hey, I found the Messiah. Right, so they're they're called, but it wasn't just out of the blue. They all had context for the calling. So I'm going to go through this little exercise today, sort of like Karen's quiz, because you all are Bible learned people, and you all have your thoughts about what Peter was like, his character. His personality. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to use this whiteboard 
And I and you guys are going to tell me what you think that Peter's character was like. Impulsive. Mm -hmm. Talked a lot. Brash. Also, he was a cursor. He had a foul mouth. Oh, really? Yes. Um, uh, yeah. I so he said talked a lot. Yeah. Swore. I didn't swear. I think we have to run the stones or anything. And, um, simple man. And Paul? A lawyer. A betrayer. Or he, he lied about knowing Jesus. Right. Yeah. Three times. Yeah. Does this guy have any good qualities? I have. He likes to cut people's ears off. He's sort of very passionate. Try it. 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 Yeah, he was willing to die for way to lead. A leader, then maybe. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be oh, one thing. You're gonna split this up. I want you to be describing for me now, Peter, before Jesus' resurrection, as opposed to Peter after the. Resurrection and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, because we have a picture of two different Peters, right? Before Pentecost and after Pentecost, right? And so, what you're you're really telling me is this before Pentecost to Peter, right? That's what you're thinking about, but after Pentecost. Peter was a changed man. He was very, very much changed. Okay? So he was impulsive, right? Um, brash, he was known to be loud, wearing, sinful, I guess. He said he was a sinful man. He said he was a sinful man. I, I think everyone in the room could go around that and say the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, he was a liar. Obviously, uh, when... Um, he didn't know Jesus. He said three times. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't know him. All right. Who was the first person to declare Jesus as the Messiah? Peter. Peter. Right? So you see the other side of him, too. John the Baptist. I thought it was no. Well, of the apostles. Oh. Of the apostles. Peter, do you remember the scene? Um, Jesus, uh, there, there was some conversation going on, and Jesus asked the question, Well, who do you say that I am? Right? Yeah. And Peter is the one that answers for the group, right? And says, You're the Messiah, the Holy One of God. Right? So he's the first to declare that too. So he, I would add bold here. Mm -hmm. And um, would you would you think of him as a leader? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, he was always sort of the spokesman for the group, right? Mm -hmm. So he's a leader. <laughs> Right. And um, did he have faith? He was a believer. He was a believer. He had faith. Was he All right. So there's a storm. Yeah, there's a storm. He's out in a boat. He's about drowning. And Jesus was with him. Jesus was got off the Sermon on the Mount, that picture over there you see on the wall. And, and, uh, People were wanting Jesus to be declared king. And Jesus says, you know what? I need to go and pray. I need to get away from this crowd. And all the apostles get in the boat. In the boat is a big storm, right? Raging water. And so 
the Lord in the middle of the night walks on the water to draw it to the boat. But what did Peter do? He gets out of the boat. He saw him, right? And he, he gets out of the boat, right? And was he walking on water for a while? Yeah. And then what happened? He started sinking, man. He started realizing what he was doing. The human side of him took over, right? Mary, you can sit next to your husband. We'll let you do that. <laughs> well, set my drinks right there. Uh, okay, you can do that too. Though. Rich is somewhere. I don't know what He's, I'm doing. Oh, you're rich? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my rich. I don't know. I lose, I, lose the, I lose him all the time. <laughs> all right. All right. So, what we're talking about is Peter's character prior to Pentecost. Okay. Okay. So, he has this faith. He says, yeah, that's great. And he goes, walks on the water, and all of a sudden, he says, man, I can't believe it. I'm walking on the water, right? Oh, no. I'm walking on the water, right? All of a sudden, he starts sinking. What's wrong with me? I'm an idiot. I'm walking on the water. I'm walking on the water. On the water? Who bails him out? Jesus. Pulls him out of the water. Seemed like he was even before and after. He was such a student. Uh, in his passion, you get confused. But he keeps learning and he keeps learning and he's bold in his passion. So he goes out, but then he learns. One thing when you start when we start reading some of the scriptures here, you're right on the floor. <laughs> I, I I I was looking at it this past week for Peter as a student and Jesus as the teacher. And when you put that mindset into a lot of the scripture, it flows beautifully. He was preparing Peter for his ministry. Yeah. Isn't he doing that with you and I? <clears throat> I mean, is that why we're here? He should yeah. be. If we let him. Yeah, yeah if we let him. That's called wisdom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Most people I told I just got finished telling you, most people in America today don't believe it's very important. <laughs> right? How about you? We're here, we're yeah, here. We're here. Yeah. <laughs> right. The relevance. Right. Well, and and religiosity and faith are different. Yes. Yes. And so many churches. Are way too much about religion mm -hmm. rather than being about community or being about growing in your faith. Right. And building a personal relationship. I call it building a personal relationship mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And and I think hey. that that is a lot of the relevance to what we do. Right? And I think the caution for those of us who are gray heavy is that we can't leave it. We can't be the ones who say, well, that's not how we did it when I was growing up, or that's not how I think it should be done. Mm -hmm. Well, how it was you're not in charge. I, yeah, uh, not, uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Who's, yeah. who's in charge? Well, if the answer is the pastor, there's a problem. Because that's God's right. in charge. No, that's not. We got one leader. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's talk about that one leader in the context of Peter's character, right? That's what we're on. So we say that Peter's character was impulsive, brash, poor, sinful, called himself a sinner. And what did he say? And, and Rich, you pointed out earlier, one of the things was when he found out who Jesus was initially, he said, man, get away from me. I'm a sinful man, right? I, you don't need to be near me. I'm a sinner, right? So that's that's his own admission, right? Um, a liar, um, and he says he's a liar because he denied he, he denied Jesus three times during um, his trial, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, I don't know what I misspelled here, but what was I trying to say? Prayer, prayer, prayer. I don't know what I spelled there. B E. P R A 
really connected to the impulsivity. Because I don't think in his heart that he was trying to portray. <laughs> no. It's his impulsiveness <laughs> that said, Oh, I wait, I don't want to be arrested. Ooh. That's right. Yeah. He, he didn't want to be arrested. He was thinking about his own skin. Yeah. Just like when he was walking on the water and he lost his faith, he was thinking about his own skin. Yeah. So I think it's part of his impulsiveness and his brashness yeah. that a lot of these things kind of fall under those larger... Yeah, they, and they do. But it's, we're trying to develop this, this character of him. Well, and, and Jesus called him at the same time that he said that he, Peter said that he was the Messiah, said that he's the rock on which he was going to build his church. Right. So Peter the rock. Peter the rock, and that's what Peter meant, yeah. So, it means. there's all Simon. these things, but he was so also... So, his first name, his given name was Simon. 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 Right. Okay. All right. Anything you want to add to this list? Just Jesus knows all things. He knew when he formed him that he was all these things. So that's yeah. exactly who he wanted to do what he was going to teach him to do and mold him to do. Yeah. And first was for him to find out he's sinful, like we're all sinful. Yeah. And Jesus needs that to start. Yeah. So that, that that is an important concept for all of us to recognize that we all are sinful. Are, are you going to add to that other side? Well, yeah, we are. <laughs> Pat, what you got for us? Well, he was humble, I think. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, very so humble. humble. After because the... he knew who he was right. before. Okay, so you're saying post? Yes. Uh, okay. All right. So let's let's go here. Okay, and we're gonna say the post. Let's see, not resurrection. He was scared. So, you know, during that period of the time between the uh, crucifixion and the ascension, fifty days later, um, at first, who was the first? I'm going to ask two questions. Who was the first people that Jesus encountered after the resurrection? Mary. 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 Yeah. And that, in fact, women. women. It was two, two or three women. Two, yeah. isn't, isn't that incredible? And who is the first male that he encountered? A couple on the Emmaus Road. Wasn't that after? No, who no, came no. after Mary? Well, oh, they they John. 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 Yeah, John. But they didn't encounter him. They just found the empty tool. Oh, true, true. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's so right. Yeah. So, the, you're the, right. So, you need to follow up or anything. Um, during that time, was it? Uh, of, the, of the apostles, Peter was the first um, first one that he appears to. Of the apostles. Okay. The Emmaus walk was, was different. There were disciples that were okay. apostles. Okay. Right? Okay. So of um, the apostles, he's the first one that he appears to. All right. So we have um there's an event that happens called Pentecost mm -hmm. that changes everything. Right? So mm -hmm. so what is Pentecost? The Holy Spirit he's saying that that's what happens in our Christian life, it's right? The, pe the peace of Pentecost. Jewish festival. Yeah. So let's start there. There was three pilgrimages that the Jews were supposed to take, right? Mm -hmm. Pentecost being one of them, Passover being another, and the Feast of Pents or Booths yeah. was the third. So Pents and Booth was about six months apart. Uh, from from um, Passover and Pentecost, so so tents and booths means it, it was a memorial to the Jews wandering in the desert for forty years, right? And 
they were to go to Jerusalem, conduct, uh, construct huts for them to live in during this feast, right? Memorializing that. About six months later, we have the Jewish feast of Passover. And why was Passover important? What did that commemorate? The, the lamb firstborn. The, 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 the blood of the lamb firstborn. The, 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 the angel of death passing over the house of the Jews that had the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. Right? The most significant holiday in the Jewish calendar, the calendar at that time. Okay? 50 days later, 5 0, 50 days later, what was the feast that was on? 50, 50, 50, Pentecost. It was the celebration of what? The Holy Spirit. No, in Jewish tradition, the first fruits of the grain harvest. The first fruits of the grain harvest happens in the spring each year. They would plant the crop. They would be harvesting it. And Pentecost was the first fruits of the grain harvest because it took about fifty days to harvest. Was it wheat? This is pretty interesting, Paul. Yeah. I just looked up. What is what does the word Pentecost mean? And it talks about being the festival of Shabbat. Yes. And it says Shabbat um, is held on the sixth and usually the seventh of Sivan. So I assume that's a month. Mm -hmm. Fifty days after the second day of Passover. Right. It was originally a harvest festival, but now also commemorates the giving of the law. So interesting because. Um, because of the way our view of the law changed because of Christ. Yeah. So Christ being the giving of the law. Beyond, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, it's giving it's, the law and giving of the whole story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. But we, we're talking about now this time at the time of, of, of Jesus, right? <laughs> There he is. You, you can sit in uh, the seat next yeah, to the seat. There's a seat here, too. I don't know what happened to Rich. That's a cover. I'm not sure if they'll Okay. Tom knows so, about that, though. So let's, so let's talk. Hey, Tom, grab one of those seats over there. You're good. Okay. All right. So we've got these three. There it is. He's checking out the technology. We've got these three <laughs> festivals. we got the three festivals. Now, think about the Jewish festival of Passover, right? Commemorating the blood of the lamb, right? The first, the, the what was the specification for this lamb that was supposed to be slaughtered? Unblemished. The unblemished lamb of God, of, of, of the Passover, right? The shedding of the blood and putting it on the doorsteps, on the doorposts. Orphan, right? All right. What happened to Jesus on the cross? What do we call him? Lamb of God. Lamb of God. The Passover Lamb of God, right? Direct parallel to Christianity. All right. So if Pentecost was happening 50 days later, right, which was the first fruits of the grain harvest. Pentecost in the Christian tradition was the first fruits of the Christian harvest. Mm. Okay. The first fruits of the Christian harvest. So Jesus goes into heaven, ascends into heaven, right? And after, after 40 days, again, 40 days, he ascends, and the apostles are sitting there. And what does Jesus tell him to do? He just said, wait, you know, wait. wait for the Holy Spirit to come. So they go when they hide for 10 days and they wait for the Holy Spirit to come. But remember, there's this giant Jewish festival going on. 
And there's this giant pilgrimage. They say that the population of Jerusalem went from almost 50,000 people in Jerusalem and the surrounding area to over 250,000 for this feast, right? They were coming for the Passover, but it was, you know, they didn't have airplanes. And so it was hard for them to get around the Roman Empire, even though the roads were good. You know, the Romans built over 250,000 miles of road, roadways. Okay. <laughs> so what are they doing? So they're going to sit around for 50 days and wait. And so the population of Jerusalem during this period of time was massive. And, and people had come from all over the Roman world to be there. After Pentecost, the celebration, and we go back home and wait for the, tent, the, the, the Feast of the Tents and the Booths, which was going to be about six months later. Okay? Now, who was supposed to be at this feast? Jews. Jewish men. First and foremost, cows give me a dirty look. I'm sorry, women no property. <laughs> and and so Jewish men were was were supposed to be required to attend, but women were optional. And if you had little children, you probably were not going to be there because of disease and the hardship of travel. Okay, so. There would be a lot of women there, but not very many small children. So Pentecost comes, and uh, the the Holy Spirit indwells all the all the, the apostles and the disciples that are in the upper room waiting, right? And what did the power of this give them? It was, it was signified by tongues, right? Mm -hmm. Tongues of fire over them. It empowered them, right? And so Peter, our spokesman for the group, the bold, bold leader, is the first one to get up and speak. And there's a gathering of thousands of people, right? And he gives this first pastoral message. And how many respond that day? 3,000. 3,000. The first fruits of Jesus' heart. Okay? So you have the direct parallel between the Jewish feast and the Christian. And Peter's the guy. So Peter... Uh, and and now I always have a problem with the word Pentecostal church because in a pen, because the first Pentecost was that the amazing thing as Jesus as Peter spoke in his own Aramaic tongue he was understood by everyone in the audience and what was that twenty eight or thirty eight I forgot the number. Um, different dialects that were present, but they all understood them in their own dialect. Okay? Now, when we look at our charismatic movement today, and we say, oh, they're a Pentecostal church, that generally means that they are tongue-speaking. But the original tongues were were understood. You, have, you were understood. Peter was talking and everyone understood him, no matter what their language. Today, it comes to mean that you're speaking in a God language and um, the way our church interprets it is you need an interpreter there to understand it. And later on in the book of Acts, you'll learn that this other type of tongues was prevalent. Okay? And in fact, I actually quoted from 1 Corinthians today and during the message where I said that where Paul was saying, even if I speak in tongues, it's not as important as love. Remember that whole love passage in 1 Corinthians? 
So, but the Pentecostal movement today uses the term Pentecost, and I think it's a wrong context for what they do. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. So, post Pentecostal Peter is with some of the same characteristics. He's bold, bold. He's a leader. He's now fearless, isn't he? Fearless. Where he was fearful, now he's fearless. Although some of his actions, like when Paul chastises him for trying to be too too Jewish, um, so he's he's bowing to pressure from other people. Yeah, he was, he was, and um, and Rich will we'll cover that later in this course. Um, so. There was a power, I don't know that we call it a power struggle, but there was different influences in the Jerusalem church. You had a guy by the name of James the Just. Who's James the Just? You know, it came down to history known as James the Just. Jesus' his brother. Jesus' his brother. And then you got Peter, who was really the sort of the middleman in the whole conflict, and then you had Paul. And, and Paul is saying... Uh, and and which led to what was called the First Jerusalem Council uh, in your Book of Acts. First Jerusalem Council tries to identify what steps that a non-Christian, a pagan, has to be to become a Christian. And this whole faction, led by James the Drust, that you had to be Jewish first, and you had to be a Jew before you could become a Christian. And then you got Paul saying, hey man, I've been out there. I know better. I have seen the Holy Spirit work in former pagans. And they didn't have to become a Jew to become a Christian. So they have this conference and sort of Peter takes the middle road and they try to come up with a compromise between Paul and James the Just. Right? And the compromise was, you don't eat the polluted meat of animals that were worshipped to a pagan god. And what was the other thing? Strangled. You, you, yeah, well, that was no Making, strangled meat. Right? Making others stumble if you stick to your own laws, like right. You don't you don't want to do anything to make other someone stumble. So if you wanted to be a if, if, if a messianic Jew wanted to continue to practice. The law they could, but uh, you didn't want to. You were not going to impose that on on Gentiles. Okay. So, so it'd be interesting to kind of know the the thought behind James the Just. The pagans would not have the law; they wouldn't know the law. So I could see where we would say. You, you need to understand this background. It, it's the same thing that happens. There are lots of churches that say it's the New Testament. You don't need to read the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And yet the New Testament is so much richer if you understand the concepts in the New Testament, or in the Old Testament. And so that argument that I think we see it today in the church. Sure, we do. It, it, it comes back to rituals and things like that. Um, so we have we have uh, post-Pentecost, Peter is a bold, fearless leader. And Peter has revelations too, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Remember when he was at the home of Simon the Tanner? And the sheets came down with all the animals clean and unclean on and he's in this trance on the roof, sleep, and the sheets come down, and go up, come down, and go up. And Peter's saying, and, and God is saying, take and eat, Peter. And Peter says, I've never taken anything that I wasn't supposed to eat, right? The uh, pork or animals that were eating. Okay. And, and, um, and God is saying, Take and eat, Peter. And then about that time, some Roman guards come to the door 
and he gives them a message saying, you go with them, and they take them back to the home of the Roman centurion, which he would have never entered because it was an unclean, unsafe place for him to be. But this Roman centurion was a God-fearer, and he goes in there and, and, and Christianizes the whole home. And he goes back and he had that knowledge when he goes into the first Jerusalem council. And he says, I saw it firsthand. God did this. And so he ends up on Paul's side. But he's trying to he's trying to appease Jesus' brother, who's a strict Jew. And it caused some conflict. And then what, what we're talking about later on um, is that Paul chastises Peter because of one of his actions. When was that in in uh, Antioch or was it in Ephesus? I I, I have to research that. Uh, he didn't, but didn't want to eat with the Gentiles. He didn't want to eat with the Gentiles, and Paul calls him a hypocrite. Mm. So not everything was great in the first century church, just like it's not in the 21st century church. But, but that goes back to we said that he was a learner. And I really think that that's the piece that we all struggle with because we get stuck in our own little boxes and then something comes along and jiggles the box, right? Yeah. And, and you have to go, oh, oh, I never considered it from that yeah. perspective before. So I, I think learner belong, belongs on both sides of this. Um. Because it's easy, it's easy to just keep doing what you've always done. It's hard to change. It's harder to to step out of yourselves and look at it from from the outside. Right. Another thing Peter did post Pentecost was miracles. And he started right? healing people. He was healing people. He was a miracle worker. Weren't all of the disciples? They all had the powers to do that. Yes. If you study each one and the way they went. <laughs> yes. So so we get a we get two different characters of Peter. And uh I think everyone from their learning and knowledge of the Bible is pretty much on target of what we what we're talking about here. What would be what what would you consider to be the most beneficial attribute of Peter as an evangelist? Well, he was willing to die for his four years, and he was fearless. And he was fearless, and he was a teacher. Fearless teacher. Good. What was what? What was the most disturbing attribute that, you, when you think about Peter, what's the most disturbing at, attribute that you see? Free or post? What? Yeah. Either. I mean, free or post Pentecost? Yeah, either. Oh. What, what do you think? Denying the Lord? Exactly. He was judgmental. He was judgmental. Judgmental. Mm -hmm. I agree with that, Pat, 100%. And his humility, because he was so passionate, he kept being out there. Yeah. He you wasn't know, very humble at times. Uh, he was after uh -huh. after the yeah. Holy Spirit, but not necessarily before. And and so one of the things that we have to do in our life is when we accept Jesus as our Lord, Lord, and Savior, we need to be humble too, right? Absolutely. There's no call to be arrogant. There's no call to be combative. Um, and, and, you know, if you think about Jesus as our leader, what happened during that whole trial, that whole passion, right? He could have called the armies of angels if he wanted, but he didn't. And when he was questioned, he was humble. When Peter cut the ear off of uh, of the guard, he healed it. In the spite of the fact of all that he was going to go through, and so 
when I think of Peter, I have um, I could I could put myself in that picture, and I I can put you know it's 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 hard it's easy for us to brag about our own accomplishments. Really, it is right. We like to think, oh, how, how important are we? But it's only when we look at the transformation that happens when people accept the Holy Spirit like Peter did and the disciples with the empowerment that it gives that we can actually begin to change. And I only say begin to change because I know John Wesley talks about entire sanctification immediately, but that rarely happens. And so it's a lifelong process for us. And um, I, I think of Peter as a really good example from a character standpoint. So I'm trying to develop this character this week. Next week, I've got a whole bunch of scriptures. Now that we have that list, we're going to keep the list on the board. And we're going to go and look at some of the scriptures that actually uh, confirm what our belief is about the pre-resurrection -res pre Peter and the post-resurrection Peter. Okay? So that's what we'll go next week. Anyone uh, have some thoughts, comments, discussion, points that they're still in their heart they want to talk about? Yes. I still yeah. just want to know what the Seder dinner for is that attributed to Passover? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's the, the, there is the Passover, it's the Passover meal, the Seder. Yeah. What's the purpose of it? Mean, that's, that's not my question. Could it my answer it is? It's the remembrance of the, the Passover. Yeah. And, and it's the whole ceremony. Yeah. If you ever have a chance to do a Seder dinner, it's very interesting. It's long, and they tell you you can't eat. Somebody told me they were going to church for dinner. And then the whole time I'm looking at it, I'm hungry and I couldn't move. <laughs> <laughs> uh, until they said I could. Just a little bit. Yeah. Um, and, and wine. And Jesus changed up the, if that was the Seder dinner that they were doing, he changed it up for the Last Supper, what we know as the Last oh, Supper. Okay. So that was the Seder dinner that they were celebrating for the Passover. Yeah. And, and, and it was. And, and, and there, uh, the Seder dish, uh, dinner had tremendous amount of tradition built into it. So there was certain times, there was certain cups, there was uh, every time they took a drink of wine, it, 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 it would memorialize one part of the ceremony and there was certain language that was used with virtually everything they put in their mouth, whether it was the unleavened bread, the bitters, the lamb, or the wine. And it was like, five, was it seven times? I think seven. Seven times during the dinner, you would take the cup and you drink it. And each time it would be a remembrance of part of that feast. And what Jesus did was he turned over the last couple of those cups and made it the memorial, the last, the last cup and the last intake of the unleavened bread. He changed, this is my body, and this is my blood. Paul, okay. I've been to the Episcopal Church, and they do that. And it's a very beautiful ceremony. Yeah. It's all white, mm -hmm. and everything is draped in white and candlelit, and it's beautiful. Yeah, it is. I did one of those. Is, is, there a, is there any place locally, is there a Messianic congregation around do you know? Newport News. Yeah. Newport maybe. Because we had some help. What we did this years and years ago with the Seder dinner, and we had some help from a Messianic Jewish community to pull it off. And it is one powerful experience. And who's the empty chair for? Huh. Isaiah? Yeah. The prophet. So we did have a Messianic Jew come and do a. He didn't do the whole Seder meal, but he came and talked about it. Yeah. It's a lot of work yes, to yeah. do the food. Yeah, And so Mark Favaza knows the tradition very, very well. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, several years in Holy Week, he actually did a Seder dinner with traditional foot washing and everything yeah. for us. I remember that back. This side. Yeah. <laughs> Am I giving away answers? You just did. Oh. Yeah. Uh, does anybody <laughs> know who had one dark name? I didn't even realize that. I got oh, yeah. a claim. Who had a dark name? I'm not supposed to. I'm not supposed to be giving answers. <laughs> okay. okay, guys. Um, we all good? Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Father, so uh, we thank you for the day. And we thank you for the life of Peter and what an example it is to all of us. And, uh, and Lord, uh, I think so often how I could put myself in, the, in those shoes. And, um, and Lord, I hope that I could put myself in the post-resurrection shoes of, of Peter also. But it's something that we try to strive for, it's something that we learn. And Father, we ask that you uh, guide us, direct us, keep us safe. Lord, we ask that we're able to mimic you in love. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you. Thank you, guys. If we wanted to watch this on YouTube, how do you get, what, what would you look for? Uh, uh, hold on. Mr. Hold on. I, 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 I just look I, for I, 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 I,